Welcome in, I'm Dirt Farmer. This is our family farm out here in Montana and hopefully this week we're gonna finish up seeding and get started on some other projects like getting the pivots ready to go. Starting off this week doing one of those jobs that you just got to kind of do every once in a while, which is cleaning stuff up. So we have a little bit of some wheat seed actually in the semi here and a little bit of some fertilizer and stuff. But we're going to clean it all up so that way when we get our pea seed, it doesn't actually kind of contaminate the seed any. Looking like we might get some rain. However, we did get some more seed. So they actually just dropped off some of our seed. And this is some yellow peas. You guys might be thinking, well, those yellow peas don't look yellow, and that's just because of the treat that's on them. Kind of dyes them a little bit reddish pink color, but they are yellow peas, and we do need a couple hundred more bushels of it as well. Due to the weather and the field being a little bit too muddy, it is kind of a slower day around here. And when I say slower, I mean it might be just kind of a normal day around here type of thing. So we're actually getting ready to change the oil on the old geo tracker here. Halfway through the oil change on this thing, but it's gonna have to wait because the uncle just said we're gonna maybe go try a little seeding. My uncle's been out in the tractor seeding the peas, just getting the start on it, just to kind of make sure everything's right and working. But I'm gonna switch them off here pretty quick and it's kind of nice, have a couple minutes, I can look at some of the winter wheat out here. It's actually looking pretty good. We weren't sure how some of this stuff was gonna be looking, but it's not looking too bad. Back in the John Deere 9510R, doing a little bit of some seeding out here. We're not on the pivot ground anymore. We're on the dry land stuff here today, getting some peas in the ground. And yellow peas are seeded at a very high rate, even on dry land ground. So if you look at the screen here, we can see we have every meter on. And you can tell each tank's on just from this little green icon there. So if the tank isn't on, we just hit that little button and it just takes the green off of that. And the front two tanks are seed and then the back one's fertilizer. So you can see right now we're putting down almost 180 pounds per acre of yellow peas with those front two combined there. So it's a lot of peas that we're putting down every single acre. And then actually our fertilizer's lower than the wheat. So we're only actually putting down about 55 pounds per acre of fertilizer. Um, that number's way off on this one though. And since we're putting so much material through the air seeder there, we're actually going a little bit slower just so we don't plug things up. So you can see we're only going about 4.4, 4.5 mile an hour right now. What a picture, perfect way to kind of end Monday off. Man, it's looking absolutely beautiful out there. I think we're gonna lose our sunlight here in just a little bit though. That is something I really love about this time of the year though, is it's always really nice when the sun actually stays out till like 9, 9.30 at night compared to in the middle of winter when it goes down at like five o'clock at night. So just those little things that make farming really enjoyable. And I have plenty of time to think about those things while I'm sitting here in the tractor for 14 or 15 hours a day. <laughs> I think we're going to call it a night while we're still ahead. So on this last pass, I found a little bit of a mud hole out there. So like I said, I think we're going to quit while we're ahead and wait until morning time when we have a little bit of some daylight so I don't accidentally put this thing in a mud hole. It's Tuesday morning and I figured since we did kind of a morning checklist with the Case IH tractor, we'd do one with the John Deere as well. And the very first thing we always do with any tractor is we check our oil. I just did that, looking good. So we should be ready to start this thing up. <laughs> And once it's running, that's actually when I like to start moving trucks. So I'm actually gonna move this truck down the road there and then walk back. Then after that is when we start greasing. So there's actually quite a bit to grease on this air seeder. All of these little pivot points we like to grease every morning. And then there's other pivot points between the air cart and the air seeder itself as well too. 
And then after greasing and letting the fan warm up for a bit, then we should be ready to go. What you guys were just watching me work on was adjusting some of our little patch hoses on these big main hoses. So this hose we have is not the best quality. It was supposed to be really heavy duty stuff. I can't remember if we got this stuff from John Deere or not, but wherever we got it from, it's kind of junk. And uh, yeah, we always have a bunch of holes in it, especially the points where it pivots. So we take some other hose, we just kind of wrap it around it type of thing to try to at least make sure the product goes through and makes it to the tower itself. First pass of the peas on the irrigated ground is done and we are right next to the pivot right now. And that is gonna be the plan for after seeding time is to get those pivots ready to go, which means I'm gonna have to check all the tires, actually retorque all the tires on it as well there too. Check all the drop tubes. Probably change the oil. I don't remember if I did that in the fall or not, and uh, just all kinds of other stuff. And there'll be plenty of footage on that. We have a little storm coming. However, I did want to do a little cab tour similar to the one we did in the Case IH tractor. So I'll show off some of the technology we got in this and some of the things that are very different than the Case IH tractor. You can probably see the very first thing is we have a whole lot more buttons in this thing. This is our throttle here. We got our gear shifter here. And some of these buttons I'll kind of walk through and some of them do, some of the ones I use anyways. But starting off on the right here, we have kind of all of our creature comforts. You got all your AC and heating stuff here. Got some lights on here, some of your radio controls, and then a bunch of other buttons for all kinds of fun stuff. And then we'll move over to our main controllers here. So this is all the stuff I'm using most of the time. And obviously the throttle I'm using a lot, the gear shifter quite a bit. And then this button is very important. So this is our GPS button right here. And it just turns the GPS on when we are pretty close. And then these three switches up here are actually our hydraulic remotes. So this first one is the one we use the most. That's for just the up and down of the discs on the air seeder. The second one we have here is actually one we don't use a whole lot. Most of the time we actually have it covered. And that is actually for winging up the entire air seeder for transport mode. And so obviously most of the time we're down in uh, normal seating mode here. And then this last one here is just for turning our fan off and on. So most of the time we have it just clicked in the on position. That way our fan is always running. But now we'll run through the actual little monitors here. So there is a whole lot of stuff. This is kind of the main screen I always have pulled up just for our air cart. And I've talked a little bit about that. But then I'll show you guys there is a whole lot more to it. So we have blockage monitor, air cart, GPS stuff, all kinds of other things, HVAC system, SCV, that's our hydraulics. We got light stuff, performance monitor, and all kinds of different things. So yeah, you just click on some of these, you can see your engine power we even got here. Like right now, we're hardly using any engine power. You can actually turn your exhaust filter cleaning to disabled or auto, all kinds of different stuff. There's a whole lot to it type of thing. But like I said, most of the time I have the air cart pulled up and sometimes if I have to adjust things on the blockage monitor, I'll switch to that one. And also the performance monitor is nice too because it's got all kinds of different little things on it. You can actually see how much fuel you're using per hour as well too. And then we'll move on to the next screen over here. So this one is our GPS and this is pretty much what we always have this one pulled up on is just on our GPS monitor there just to make sure we're seeding in the right place. And we're actually getting ready to turn around. You can see that the end of the field is kind of right up there. So I'm gonna turn around quick, then we'll come back to this. We're turned around, so we'll get back to it here. Same thing on this one, there is a whole bunch of different menus. So you can see we got all these different ones. I'll move our duct tape up. I just use that to kind of keep our family name um, out of here because that is one thing is I don't give off our exact location. And then if we go back to this, there's actually two home screens. So this is like our main home screen here. And then we actually have this other home screen. It's got all kinds of different stuff and more sub menus again. You can actually change all your resources. And then actually 
this is a little bit different because you can actually set your equipment. Right now I do have it set up for this air seeder. So you actually go out and you measure it. So this should be almost exactly perfect. You can actually see there that the air seeder is sitting behind here. So I think it's like 12 feet or 13 feet actually behind the actual tractor here. So I actually had to measure it one day and just measure from the GPS unit, which is sitting right about here on the roof and then back to about the front of the air seater, or about the front of the discs anyway type of thing. And actually, I think I may have measured it to the middle of the discs, but yeah, you have to add all that extra stuff in there. And that way, when you're actually turning and stuff, it does a pretty accurate job of measuring everything. Other than that, it's pretty standard in here. So you got your normal RPMs here and your miles per hour. You got a couple of gauges, like your fuel and stuff and what gear you're in. So we're an F8 right now. And then, yeah, you kind of come to this part and it's pretty open in here. You got your steering wheel and kind of the normal stuff on there and, and the rest of the dirty cab. I got obviously my drone I always like to carry around for getting footage. Water, we carry our toolbox in here, GoPro, because you know we got to get more footage. We do have a buddy seat in this tractor, which is nice. I can put my lunch and dinner on there. You have the lunch box, GoPro case that I always keep in my lunch box. And then just some random stuff back here. We like to keep a little bit of some hose, a little bit of garbage because I forgot a garbage bag. Yeah, lots of books and stuff, you know, in case you get bored or you need to fix your tractor. But well, that is one thing I really do like is this seat that swivels and it swivels really far. So most of the time I'm actually kind of sitting like this. So that way I can keep an eye on everything and I don't have to turn my entire body to look back here. Most of the time I can kind of see at least this much uh, pretty easy without kind of kinking my neck. And remember, if you guys do have absolutely any questions, please ask in the comments and I will try to do my best to answer them or hopefully get a little footage of them as well too. I would definitely say there's a chance that things are going to get a little moist out here pretty soon. I think we might be about done for the day. It is starting to come down pretty good and I think it's just going to end up getting a little bit worse out here too. But we do love seeing the rain so we cannot complain one bit. It definitely got a little bit muddy out here pretty quickly. You can see everything is just kind of coated in mud. Did get actually cleaned off a bit though too so that's always good. Also, I think my boots weigh about five more extra pounds because there is a bunch of mud on them. And that's one thing, our mud here in Montana is super, super sticky. So that's why you can see it's stuck to the tires and everything. Another morning and we're down here at the pivots again. However, it's a little bit muddy out here still. You can see there's actually mud kind of all over the service pickup and stuff, but we're trying to get this thing fueled up. And we'll see if we can get any seed in the ground today or not. It is pretty muddy out here today, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what it looks like in the afternoon. And this is something I was actually talking about in last week's video, but talking about having to keep an eye on these discs when it gets muddy out here. So you can see this is all relatively clean here, but then we have a big old mud clump up here. So yeah, these mud clumps can actually affect the depth because this is our depth wheel here. So yeah, if this big mud clot is down here at the bottom our seed is actually going to end up a little bit shallower in the ground just because of the mud built up on this wheel here and we don't want our seeds being super shallow so we do have to keep an eye on these and that's kind of why i quit last night is because they were getting muddy so usually as long as these things aren't picking up mud i can seed in the rain but once they start picking up some mud that's when i quit since it's a little bit too wet to be seeding this morning i think we're going to take a little bit of some time right now and go check out that three hundred thousand dollar machine we got sitting out here and here it is, the newest purchase for the farm, the John Deere R4045 sprayer. Like I was saying, this thing is expensive. It's about $300,000 used. I don't know how much we actually paid for ours though. However, with the $300,000 price tag, there is some pretty cool technology and some features on this thing. One of John Deere's big selling points on these was the carbon fiber boom. So you can actually see Instead of having like a metal boom up here, this thing is actually all carbon fiber. And I don't know if there's actually some metal underneath or how that works, but I'm assuming there must be some type of stiffener plate or 
kind of arms or something in there. It also has the six turret nozzle bodies, which is nice because I think it just automatically goes to whichever one you want. You just kind of pick it from in the cab and say, I want to use this little white one, for example, and then you can just switch it to the yellow one if you need to type of thing. Another extremely nice feature is gonna be the height control. So there's actually a sensor on the booms there. So when you're running it along the ground, you don't actually have to manually change the height. You kind of set it and then it should run at that height or relatively close to that height. And it has a two-way pump as well, so you can use it just for spraying like normally, or you can reverse the pump so you can actually use the sprayer to load the sprayer. One thing I don't like about it, it is a newer diesel engine, so it does have a def tank, which is always wonderful. And hopefully one of these days we'll actually use the thing. My uncle's actually still trying to figure out how everything works on it, so he hasn't done any spraying with it, and he's been using the old sprayer. And that's something that we actually discuss a lot, especially us younger farmers that have been raised around some of the technology because some days you just want a sprayer that's going to spray some chemical and do five or ten gallon per acre work type of thing and this thing you got to do a ton of stuff just to get it to actually spray and it's like do you want to be paying three hundred thousand dollars for a machine like this or do you want to be spending like a hundred thousand dollars or less for something like our spray flex sprayer that does the same exact job but a whole lot cheaper and that's another thing too, is the parts are so special and so expensive on these sprayers. It's like, do you want to get something that's kind of specialty John Deere stuff and you got to pay for all the expensive John Deere parts as well? Or do you want something like that Spray Flex that has a lot of generic parts on it? And like I said, it is some pretty cool technology and it's always cool having the green and yellow paint on the farm here. But I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how many issues we have with this thing compared to the Spray Flex and if it does any better of a job. And at the end of the day, I'm just happy I don't have to pay for that thing because I think it'd take me about 20 years to pay that thing off. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, but we are going. We're not going very fast. I'm actually only going about 3.8 to four mile an hour right now because if I do go any faster, we start plugging up with mud. And you guys can actually probably even notice that just looking out here right now that the seeded stuff on the right hand side there is definitely way darker so there is a whole lot of moisture in the ground still. We are hoping to get this field done here. We only have probably about 50 or 60 acres left before this storm comes and hits us. So we are in kind of a race against mother nature here. We're going 3.8 miles an hour but it's still kind of a race. definitely have this field done. We're actually just doing the edges on this one here. So just got to make this last pass and kind of get down to the end there by the pivots. And then we should be moving down on that other half of this pivot. Another chilly, slightly damp little morning out here in Montana. It's kind of misting out here, but the ground is pretty muddy. So we're probably not going to be getting a ton of seeding today. The rain's coming down a little bit harder now. So I think our chances of seeding today are going down some more. But we're doing one of those jobs you got to just do every once in a while. Cleaning out some buckets because it's always nice to have some nice clean buckets on the farm here for all sorts of random jobs. That's one thing you never have enough clean buckets on a farm. And usually when I don't have much footage for the week it's because I'm doing jobs like this. Just some kind of random monotonous stuff that just kind of takes a while. But you got to do it anyways. Raining even more now so I think there's about a 0% chance we're going to be getting any seating done today. So I've finally been able to kind of start working on the Dodge here and hopefully I can get the water pump tore out of this thing here today. But it is about lunchtime so I'm gonna go grab some food quick and one of the first times I've actually been able to have lunch inside the house for a while. And we have a lot of work to do on these pivots to get them ready to go. However, today's job is gonna just be getting this thing actually pulled back together. So right here at kind of the main tower, if we go up, 
you can see there's actually kind of a little gap up there. So we need to crawl up on top of this thing and actually come over here and put some bolts in here and get this thing pulled back together again. done with this one now and we don't actually even have to do the south pivot because my uncle already got that one done not problem free this morning so i actually was replacing one of our little patch hoses here because this one kind of keeps getting bigger you can actually see it kind of through that hose there so yeah we put a longer chunk on this one we took the old one off and about six feet away we already have a spot for that old one so yeah we have a little hole right here this stuff's kind of getting pretty rotten we might have to replace these hoses this year but yeah we'll throw this one on this hole and hopefully keep going here made it one hole pass here and we already have a new hole and i'm actually out of our little covers there so i'm gonna have to use duct tape just to kind of wrap this thing up it's not the best way to do it because duct tape does eventually just kind of rip apart but it will work for today type of thing quick seating to lay out here. I actually have to go spray now because my uncle's going on vacation, I guess, this weekend, even though we have a million things going on. But I guess he is the boss, so he gets to kind of choose what he wants to do. But yeah, I can't really run the sprayer and the seeder at the same time type of thing. So yeah, I gotta go get the spraying done first now, and then I'll come back and go seeding again. The wind came up, so now I can't spray. So that's why the sprayer's just kind of sitting down there in the field, because that's the field I need to get done. However, instead of sitting there waiting, I might as well get some seeding done and uh, hopefully I can get that spraying done sometime today because my uncle said needed to be done today type of thing, but obviously not that important if he was ready to go on vacation instead of spraying. And I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything like that. That's My uncle has worked lots of years on this farm, so he definitely deserves some time off. It's just really easy to get frustrated um, just because there is hired guys around here who work for other farms. and. They make a lot more money than I do, and they have a whole lot more time off as well. So like I said, it's just pretty easy to get frustrated some days. Not gonna be a whole lot of footage of this because I am in a 100% rush, but we're doing about 14 mile an hour right now. One of these days when it's a little less hectic on a flatter field, I'll show you guys kind of all this stuff and how this sprayer works. We're spraying Valor out here, which is for killing grass and weeds in pulse crops type of thing. Well, I got all the spraying done. However, I need to get the tractor filled because we ran out of seed. And since I'm the only person here now, I actually have to shuttle everything myself. So I got to get over to the trucks there, which means I just got to kind of walk back and forth now. It's Saturday morning. You guys can probably see we're closed up the truck right now. So I went to go fill the air feeder last night. And then I looked at the truck and realized we had hardly any seed left in there. So now we're going to get this thing loaded up so we shouldn't have to worry about that and hopefully the rest of the peas inside the semi here will fit in the truck too. Finally getting ready to load our peas up in the air seeder here. However, there is one more step whenever we are loading peas or lentils. We are adding a little extra 
along with the peas there, and we actually have our special little applicator. I'll show you how this thing works and what we're actually applying to the seeds as well too. And it's not seed treat because you can see these things have already been treated. That's why they're kind of pink at their yellow peas. And that's actually what we're adding here is the inoculant. Nodulator is just the brand name of this type. But what this stuff is essentially is just really black dirt. So I'll pull a little bit out of the bag here. You can see it, this stuff is literally just like black dirt. Definitely a whole lot different than our dry dirt we have here in Montana. This is the really nice quality stuff. It's actually considered peat, P-E-A-T. And what this stuff does is it actually helps our peas and lentils make their own fertilizer. So that's what some of these different crops do is they'll actually make a little bit of their own fertilizer on the roots themselves. And this peat actually helps them just kind of produce a little bit more nitrogen. And there is a certain amount of peat you're actually supposed to apply to your peas. So for our front tank, we should be getting about seven bags and then that middle tank, it should be about four. And how our applicator works is we'll literally just kind of pour that black dirt into the top here. And then this thing's actually plugged in. We have a little quick connect right here into our truck there so you can see we actually have our little electrical plug in so then all i have to do turn that thing on and it'll start applicating the dirt into the auger itself on the peas and i'll show you guys kind of how it looks when it's actually going in the tank there too usually we like to have two people doing this job just because it does make it a lot simpler but like i said my uncle's actually on vacation so I have to kind of run up and down and make sure our little applicators always got some in there because it can only really fit like two bags at one type of thing. And if we just grab a quick sample here, you can see this stuff has little tiny black spots on it there and that is the inoculant just sticking to the actual pea itself. So if you guys have noticed my face being a couple shades darker throughout the week, it's because of this inoculant stuff. That dust is just really, really dark colored and it really likes to stick to stuff, especially your skin.